I'm going to kind of go over what we've been going over the last couple of days, and I appreciate y'all being uh, patient with the uh, Friday class or Thursday class. Friday's class went well. I taught Friday's class from the hotel room with my laptop and my document cam, and it went well. The reason I couldn't do it here is because I don't have a camera right here. We have cameras, but I would have to ask somebody to come up here and put the camera on the thing face that way. Then I would have to get either one of y'all to log in to Skype and or one of the teachers to come over here, and it's just too much trouble. So I just let y'all watch the video. Hopefully you watched it. If you didn't, I'm going to skim over what is on YouTube right now. Two or three sections are on YouTube. I don't know which sections they are. I'm just going to go over them. All right. First of all, we're going to go over what is probability. Hmm? Probability. Yes, it is a percent. But what is the what is the actual definition of probability? Well, the Hubertism definition is assigning. I don't know if that's right. Assign a number. And in this case, most of them will be decimals. You're talking about percentages. But in probability, you want to keep them decimals or fractions. Assigning a number to a prediction based on experience. Logic or data. Now, I tell this story, and I'm not going to draw it out because it takes too long, and it's on the videos. All y'all know Wild Hog Road, okay? If you don't know where Wild Hog Road is, some people call it Highway 187, but it's not Highway 187. It's called Highway 187 is right out here by the way, okay? That's a Wild Hog Road up there, okay? Fuss at me, then just leave, okay? But that's, that's Wild Hog Road. And if you go down Wild Hog Road, it takes 16 minutes to get from Highway 24 to Pillow. Right there at the Waffle House, near the Waffle House red light. And if you have a class at 15 minutes till 8 in the morning, and you get on Wild Hog Road at 15 minutes till 8, you can forget getting there. I thought you said it was 15 minutes. Yep. But there's the Little Blue Haired Ladies Club, and they live on Wild Hog Road. What is the Little Blue Haired Ladies Club? They're the ones that drive 33 and a half miles an hour. They do not drive any faster, and they do not drive any slower. Because most cruise controls, after 30 miles an hour, you can set your cruise control, and they sit there at 33 miles an hour. Okay? Wild Hog Road is about six miles long. Six or eight. Okay? You can't pass on Wild Hog Road very well, unless you're one of these testosterone males that leaves their cars a jetpack or whatever, and they end up getting somebody in on. But anyway, if you're not one of those idiots, then you have to stay behind this woman all the way up till Pendleton High School. Now, you get to Pendleton High School, when you get to Pendleton High School, you've got about five, six hundred feet before you get to the red line. I'm going to draw that a picture. I'm going to draw a picture right here. And I'm going to ask y'all some questions. Here's Wild Hog Road. And it's about six or eight miles long. I-85 is right here. Huddle House is right here. And this is Pendleton High School. And you get up here. And there's an intersection. And you got a, you got a <laughs> lane that turns left and a lane that turns what? Right, and you got the Waffle House right here. Now you get to Pendleton High School, and you're already road raging. Okay, you already it's 815. Okay, <laughs> and you're road raging, and you're clamping down on the steering wheel, and running by texting. You know when I'm talking, make sure you put your phones up, okay? Because when you ask me a question, I want to start texting on my phone because that's being rude. All right, so anyway, to make a long story short, when you get to Pendleton High School, you say to yourself, I'm about to kill this woman, but I bet you a dang dollar she's going to turn left. 
And just as soon as you say that, five seconds after you say it, what does she do? Turn left. Turn to left. Did you just predict the future? No, you did not. What you did is you used experience and logic. I traveled that road for 15 years before I started teaching here, okay? And I've traveled that road. And every time you get behind one of those people, they're going to turn left. Now, was I smart predicting the future? No. What I did is use logic. Anybody that lives on the west side of Anderson right here, everybody lives over here, double bridges all the way up to 28 bypass up here. There's 28 bypass, okay? Anybody that lives this way, west Anderson, if you travel Wild Hog Road, where are you going? There's only two places you can go on Wild Hog Road. One is Pendleton, where's the other one? Sandy Springs. Sandy Springs is where? Right down here, okay? But how do I know she's not going to turn right on Sandy Springs? Because there's about three or four roads that you can turn right to go to Sandy Springs on Wild Hog Road. So I'm not using experience there, I'm using what? Logic. If she was going to Sandy Springs, she would have turned off on one of those three other roads. So logic dictates, and experience dictates, that when she gets to that left or right right there, she's going left because if she was going right, she would have turned off a little panel. Okay? Now, a lot of people say, well, that's predicting the future. No, it's not. When you meet somebody that says they can predict the future, there's only one thing you have to ask them, and what is that? Come on, people. What would you ask somebody if they had, if they could tell Prove the it. The lottery numbers. Give them a piece of paper and say, write down the Powerball numbers for Friday. <laughs> what they gonna do? Oh, no, 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 that's not what I do. Shut the hell up. Okay. Why? Why are they a fraud? Because what they do? How many of you here played twenty questions? Okay, that's exactly what they do. What do people do when you go in? I'm going to tell your future. What's the first thing they start doing? Asking questions. Asking you questions. They're using the law of deductivity, deduction, whatever you want to call it. Okay, what did I just do? I just took the data, took the logic and experience. I took the data off because data <coughs> doesn't apply here. I took the logic and I took the experience and I said, she's going to turn left. And that's what you do when you do the same thing, get behind somebody, or name a road that you get behind a little blue haired ladies' club and you can't get off. Highway 24 is another one. You can't pass. Ask the chicken truck man. <laughs> that was awful. I don't know anything about it. Did, he, did they die or anything? Yeah, I, what, yeah. mm, I hate that. You don't, you don't text on the double bridges. And you don't do anything else on double When you're on the double bridges, this is the way you are. Because if you flinch, you might run into somebody. Okay? Now, what's that got to do with anything? You get on roads, you use that logic. And you think about, well, if I'm going 24 and I've passed 85, there's only two places that I can go pretty much. Where are, what's, what's the two places? Westminster and where else? Well, Oakway, Westminster, Seneca. Okay? That's the only two places you can go, Really? Because you go through Westminster, go to the mountains, it keeps going up. So the whole point is, you, you really, you know, you get to Westminster, you turn right, you turn left, you go to the mountains, you turn right, you go to Seneca, don't you? No, you go straight, you go to Seneca. Turn right, you go where? I don't know. I can't remember all the places up there. But anyway, to make a long story short, you use logic. Now, what has this got to do with, well, we're going to throw what we just learned in Right there, the data with the statistics, because that's what you're calling stats, is your data. Whether it's a poll, whether it's records from, you know, past years or whatever. <clears throat> and you're going to crank out the numbers, and we're going to call it probability. Probability goes from zero to what? One. Well, so if you're doing percents, and usually you don't do percents because... Some statisticians have a fit if you say percent. Uh, but 0.5, we do everything with decimals. You can, if you want to associate it with percentages, that is fine. I don't care. But there's some teachers that don't have a life, girlfriend or boyfriend, and they 
you have a hissy fit if you say percentages. Just warning you. Okay, 0.25 is right here. 0.75 is right here. This is half likely. This is less likely. This is very likely. If something gives you zero probability, does that mean it's impossible? Oh, you got to think of two words. Anybody know what I'm thinking of? Birth control. <laughs> now, that offends anybody? I'm sorry, okay? But what happens when you, use, when you think, oh, I'm not going to get pregnant. Ding! And then later you find out, guess what? It's supposed to be impossible. No, 99.7%. Okay, everybody say, well, 100%. Well, 0% get pregnant. How many times have you heard of somebody get pregnant and they're on birth control? A lot. Okay, so that is a standardized test question. Just because something has zero probability does not mean impossible. It's very, what? Unlikely. Unlikely, yes. Okay, 0% put impossible and put an X through it because there are test questions that ask you that, whether it's standardized test or one of my tests. If something is zero probability, does that mean it's impossible? You say no. Okay. Now remember, what are we doing? We're assigning a number to a prediction. It's not concrete. It's just, you know, just like I, you know, get behind that woman on Wild Hog Road. I bet you a dollar she's going to turn left. Well, I already know she's going to turn left because she had three tries to turn right and she didn't take it. Okay, so it's not rocket science. Okay? Now, what is probability? There's two types of probability. There is what I call the theoretical probability. And then there's the physical probability. Now, if I ask one of y'all, what is the probability of picking a king out of a deck of cards? What will you say? Four out of fifty-two. Okay, show me your deck of cards. Where's your deck of cards? Well, how'd you know that? It's one hundred percent based on what? Mathematics. One hundred percent based on mathematics. You don't have a deck of cards in front of you. You just said four out of fifty-two. How many? How, what's the probability of rolling a six on a die? One out of six. How'd you know that? Where's your die? You don't have one. What's the probability of a seven on a die? Zero. That's a trick question. People miss that on the test. Okay. Zero. It cannot happen. That's one time where it cannot happen. If there is not a seven on a die, you can't roll a seven. All right. So. Your probability, this kind of probability, is based on what? Based on math. Okay? The probability of a king is 4 out of 52. The probability of a 6 on a die is 1 out of 6. And I don't have a die or a um, deck of cards. Where the physical probability is based on events or an experiment slash observation, meaning that you actually do it, okay? Now, Miss Harbin's not going to get to join in on fun, but I'm going to take, somebody stole a deck of my cards. That gum. See, I hate a thief. All right, y'all, four or five group up right here. Okay, so, you know, over here, and then you four or five back here. Alright, y'all y'all four around here. I tell you what, you two. Or if somebody can join this group right here, why don't you turn around with this group? Now you're three in that group. Okay. Now let me show you what you're gonna do because somebody's gonna screw it up. Okay? So I better just just show you what we're gonna do. You gotta have a person that shuffles. Please get somebody that knows how to shuffle because it doesn't do well. Somebody that does this. That don't work well. Okay? 
It's somebody to record, somebody to write down, and somebody to actually do the observation. Somebody to actually pull the card or whatever. Now, you're going to pick something to pick out of the deck of cards. So let's say that Mr. Poole says, Poor, or Mr. Poor says, I will pick a king of hearts. So he'll write down king of hearts. And the person to write that down, and they're going to shuffle and pick ten times. They're going to shuffle, 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 somebody picks, write it down. Shuffle, 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 somebody picks, write it down. Do it ten times. And then, so you're going to write, okay, pick the two of hearts, pick the two of clubs, whatever. Um, pick a three of diamonds, and so on. You write down all ten. Okay, that's one. And then you're going to do the same thing with, and you can pick hearts. You can say, what's the probability of hearts? You can say probability of king. You can say probability of even card. You can say probability of a black card. Probability of a red card. Whatever y'all come up with. Just pick one thing that you want to pick, and then go through and do it ten times. Shuffle each time. Write it down each time. And do the same thing with the die. Now, with the die, pick a number or an even number. Or an odd, or whatever you want. One, five, six, two, even, odds, whatever you want to pick. But with the with the die, you want to try to do the same drop every time. So if you drop it from about four inches, keep it at four inches. Don't do something different. Okay? There's a reason I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. With the die, you do ten rolls. Ten rolls here. Ten picks here, and you write down each one. Write down what you want. I'm going to pick uh, six. Probability of six here. And you do ten rolls, write them down, and you do ten picks here, shuffle and picks, and write them down. So do that. Miss Harbin, you can do this at home if you got a deck of cards or a die. Or you can just sit there and not do anything. <laughs> I have a deck of cards. Okay. Well, you can do that. Okay, come on. Please don't screw it up. Just <laughs> Or okay, let's don't let's don't draw this thing out. Just shuffle them and pick. Y'all daggum having card tricks up here. Pick one card, write it down. Pick one card, shuffle up. Pick one card, write it down. Do it ten times. Shuffle and pick ten times. Ten cards. Yeah. I'm gonna show you something. So shuffle, pick, write it down. Shuffle, pick, write it down. Shuffle, pick, write it down. Pick, write it down. Do that ten times. <laughs> oh, make sure you take all the dunce cards out. I mean, take the big hoe and little mo out. Take the big hoe oh, and little joker out. I think I'm taking all of them out. I think the jokers may be still in there. <laughs> Y'all are taking entirely too long. You don't have to. He's not collaborating. Put them back in the deck. Why are you putting them in the deck? Oh, that's up. See, I told you y'all to screw it up. Break an anvil with a banana. An anvil with a banana. An anvil is what falls on Coyote's head. Brood runner causes. Forget it. It's what your blacksmith beats on. An anvil. Some students can break an anvil with a banana. And y'all have successfully done that. 
You already done the die too? Yes. That back group is y'all are moving along. This group can't get past fifth card. Because <laughs> y'all tough, y'all can take it. Y'all don't need a prayer closet and a pillow and a puppy. No. <laughs> you know, you can't have fun. You gotta have fun. Okay, this group up here, do not invite to your house to play cards, okay? Because this group will make everybody kill each other. making a bad name for BHP. Y'all know that, don't you? It's just a tennis player. Oh, is that it? They, they spend too much time on the square down there. Yeah. When I was a kid, my mother used to take me to the square down there, and there was an ice cream place down there. I don't know if it's still down there. I think the drugstore is still there, but it, there's an old drugstore right to the right. And I also got kicked out of the Winn Dixie there. <laughs> you know where the old Winn Dixie is? Yeah. Behind the square? Yeah. And now it's like a Paul's or Ed's or something, sells feed and see. But they had those electric doors that you step on. Mm -hmm. And I was about five years old. That manager grabbed me by the seat of the pants. <laughs> <laughs> and he took I'm me outside. The that, no. Right the behind way. the square. You know where the funeral home is? Mm -hmm. okay. Right across from there, there there's, a, there's a big building right there that used to be the Winn Dixie, and that uh, they changed it into a feed and seed store or something. I don't know what it is now. It's right there near the same Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that's If you look, you'll see the old. You can see where it used to be a grocery store. But anyway, he ran me out of there. He and he knew my grandfather. My grandfather was sitting out in the car. He grabbed me by the seat of the pants, by the belt. And he just carried me out and threw me in the back seat. It's the doors you, you step on them. I was stepping on them and running around in circles. <laughs> scared me to death. I thought he was going to kidnap me. <laughs> and he didn't have to do so, so I didn't know. All right, y'all finished?
I'm not even going to ask. They just now figured out how to shuffle the cards. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this. Do you think that the Bible is going to be able to shuffle the cards? Do you think that the Bible is going to be able to shuffle the cards? The ones that didn't break the anvil with the banana. Do y'all know what an anvil is? It's the thing that looks like this. Drops on the coyote's head. You make horseshoes with it. It's made out of nothing but plain, hard iron. Some students could break that thing with a, with a banana. In other words, mess up anything. <laughs> I got two. I got my granddaddies. Both of my granddaddies anvils. They don't make knives and stuff. They don't forge the firearms. You don't have no idea what I'm talking about. All right, group in the back. What did you pick as a card? I'm sorry, what? Eight of hearts. Eight of hearts. So they wanted the probability eight of hearts. That is how many? How many eight of hearts are there? There's only one. You mean eights. There's four eights, yeah. But one out of 52. Somebody give me that decimal. What's one out of 52? Just give me two decimal places. Point zero what? Zero one nine. Zero one nine. Okay. Now, how many times did you roll? You rolled, I mean, you picked ten times. How many did you get eight of hearts? Zero out of ten is equal to zero, which is equal to zero. These are not equal. Okay, one's two percent, the other one's zero percent. All right, let's take this group. What did y'all pick for a card? Um, King of diamonds. King of diamonds, and there's only one. I have to draw two triangles because I cannot draw a diamond. It always looks like a parallelogram, so I can't. I have to use two. Okay, shut up. One. <laughs> King of Diamonds, 152.019. What did you pick? When you actually did the drawing, what did you pick? How many times did you get the King of Diamonds? Uh, uh, once. once. Well, that's good. That's one. So that time, that usually don't happen. Okay, so y'all did it wrong. So y'all suck. <laughs> one out of 52. No, one out of 10, which is equal to point what? One zero, pretty close, but not exactly close. <laughs> and let's go with the die. Back group here. What did you pick? Probability of what number or what? Three. Three. And what did you get? Two out of ten. Two out of ten. Probability of three. Two out of ten, which is equal to point two. This is equal to point one six seven. So that's not equal. The whole purpose of this exercise is to show you that the physical probability does not always equal the what? Theoretical. Theoretical probability. When does it? Well, there's a term in in static statics. In statistics, it's called the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers, basically, to Hubert is C Y A. What does C Y A stand for? Cover your backside. If you present something, if you are being presented to, you always want to know how many did they pull from. Because you can be lazy and only pull five things, or you can do your job well and pull 500. Whether it's polling, whether it's surveying 15 people <laughs> versus 1,500 people. The whole point is, this is what happens, and I'm just going to show you the graph, and I want you to look at it. Let's say that this is the probability of tails. Point. Probability of tails on a coin is what? Point 0.5. Everybody with me? <laughs> Now, if you start flipping a coin, that's the theoretical probability. If you start flipping a coin, it's going to look something like this. Okay? And these are the times you flip it. Ten times. 
20 times, dot, 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 1,000 times, dot, 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 10,000 times, dot, 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 and then 100,000. <coughs> there was two guys in MIT that did an experiment. They took a roll of quarters. This really happened. They took a roll of quarters, and they put them things in a laser projector thing, weighed them laserly, measured them to the ten thousandth of an inch, all kinds of different measurements. Balance, to check to see it was balanced by computer. And then they took that roll of quarters, which is 40 quarters, right? Isn't it 40, 10 dollars? 40 quarters. And they made one algorithmically programmed in the computer quarter, virtual quarter. And they wrote a program, and they wrote the program to where they would flip that quarter continuously until the physical probability, what? Equaled what? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Somebody want to guess how many times it took? Huh? You watched the video, didn't you? 100,000. And what's happening to this graph at 100,000? What's happening to the, it's converging on to the what? The 0.5. So it probably never will touch it. But at this point, it stopped. The computer stopped at 0.499995. The law of large numbers basically dictates you get out of it what you what? Put into it. Okay? If you're, if you're a Michelin executive and your quality assurance job and you're supposed to project for next year, we're going to have... 24% of our tires are going to be bad. Okay, the board of directors, they sit up there and go, okay, 24, blah, 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 be 1.1 million next year. So they factor in 1.1 million dollars for the budget. Everybody with me? For next year's budget. Next year rolls around, it's 56%, which equals about 7.8 million. You just call it Michelin, 6.7 million bucks. Guess what? Why? Because they paid you 125, 85, 125,000 just to crunch what? Numbers. If you're paid five or six figures to crunch numbers, you better make sure you cover what? Your backside. And not pull five tires. You better pull 5,000 tires. Everybody with me? That's what the law of large numbers says. If you're going to survey, if you're going to poll, if you're going to look at records, okay, your data must be heavily what? Valid. Your data must be heavily valid. How do you make it heavily valid? You do a lot of it. Now, in chapter 7 and 8, there's a formula that tells you how many you need to do it. If you want a 94% confidence level, Function in the number is a real simple formula. It spits out 1,446. You're going to do 1,500 or 2,000. Okay. So there's a formula that tells you that. Okay. I'm one. You know, there's two things that you need to overestimate. Two. One is statics, st statistics. And the other is what? Engineering. Why would you want an engineer to overcompensate or overestimate? People are stupid, right? People are stupid, whether you're adults or kids or whatever. You're stupid, all right? How many of you have seen pictures of people in an apartment complex that have 100 people on the third, so third story and they start having a party and start dancing. What happens if you have too many people in your apartment and you're on the third floor and everybody's dancing at one time? What's going to happen? Floor breaks. Collapse. So it collapse. All right? That's why engineers always need to overestimate. Always. Statistics, same thing. If Let's say that you're the, I'm just using this because everybody knows what tires are. And everybody knows what Michelin is, so I use Michelin over and over. Because it's kind of hard to do the first quality of diapers or tissue paper rolls. or It's kind of hard to do that. So it's easier to do it with 
And it's kind of hard to do it with carburetors or fuel injectors because people don't see that. When I say a tire, 99.9% .9 of you know what I'm talking about. What about that 0.1%? We're not going to talk about that person, okay? <laughs> All right, that's the animal and banana person, okay? <laughs> there, <laughs> there's one thing that you need to realize about tires. If, if, if I give you the money to present and you've got a choice of pulling five tires, 500 tires, or 5,000 tires, you're going to pick 5,000 because you want to try, do you want to try to predict exactly how much money is going to be in bad tires next year? Yes. Why? Because it's your job. And then if you get it right on the money, guess what they might give you? A raise. A raise or a bonus. But if you don't get it, you're fired. Now, some of y'all may not like that word, but that is a true result in what? Life. Yeah. So, I mean, some people don't like to hear that, but you don't do your job, you get fired. Okay? So that's that. That's law of large numbers. So right now, you've got probability, and you've got how to do probability, and you've got law, law of large numbers. Now, let me talk about a couple of things. What is the big hang-up with probability? There's two hang-ups. Not the math. If some of y'all have taken this before, you know the math is not the problem. Two things. Reading and what? Knowledge. Now, most of y'all are female, so y'all not going to have a problem. Okay? Guys, don't follow what? Put the bicycle together. Christmas. Put the bicycle together. Okay, I'm done. It's 3 o'clock. I'm going to bed. What does the wife say? What's all this? What's this? What's this? Those are extra parts. Next morning, Johnny's in the hospital because the tire fell off, going down the hill, and the bicycle ran in the ditch. Okay? Guys do not follow directions. Before GPS, how many of you heard stories of a guy driving and walking around the same QT over and over and over with the pink super beetle out front? Okay? Over and over and over. We passed that. There's that pink, there's that pink bug again. <laughs> Shut up. I know where I'm at. When it comes to two things, when it comes to when it comes to common sense and and reading directions, guys pretty much suck. Okay? We don't read directions very well. And we don't follow directions very well. So guys have a problem right here. And you will see me sometimes on questions. I don't read the question all the way through. And I don't have the right answer because I'm not reading the question all the way through. Okay? It's just a guy thing. Okay? Knowledge. What's the roulette table? What's a deck of cards? How many cards are in the deck of cards? How many sides are on the die? Okay? You gotta have that knowledge. If you don't have that knowledge, you need to look it up. Okay? When you go through the homework and they say blah, 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 and you say, what the heck is that? You need to Google it because you gotta have that knowledge. And usually they tell you. If it's something weird, they tell you what it is. But it's not the math that holds you up, it's basically the question and the reading. All right. Probability is written like this. Probability of an event. I usually write the word out. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Okay, there are some instructors that will have a fit. So, the king, or you can put a K. Now, let's talk about king. Probability of a king. And again, I'm going through a lot kind of briefly, because y'all should have already read, I mean, done the video. King. There's the other side of the probability of a king, and that is the probability of not king. There's two sides to every coin. There's two sides to every what? Sword. There's two stories on every event, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what's the other side of black? White. White. What's the other side of true? False. False. What's the other side of zero? One. What's the other side of... I'll get y'all on this one. What's the other side of guilty? Not guilty. 
Not guilty. Very good. You must have done that again. Okay, I got one question for y'all, and y'all answer it truthfully. You ready? Was OJ innocent? Mm. No, he was not. Okay, give me, give me give you a story, okay? I'm going to give you a story, and then I want you to answer that question. All right? Miss Jeter got a job, and she's doing good. She's the assistant manager at Papa John's. Okay? And she's trying to work her way up to the manager. She wants to make that extra money. Okay? Her roommate... Mr. Poor is a loser. Okay? Mr. Poor is a bum. He sleeps on the couch. Okay? He eats her food. Okay? And the other roommate, there's another roommate in there, and, and they just don't get along. Okay? And Mr. Mr. Poor, he, he's just a leech. Okay? So one night, Mrs. Cheater has to go to work Friday night, and she goes to work. And she takes her car and she parks. And before she leaves, Mr. Jeter wants to go to a party, of course. And he ain't got no car, ain't got no insurance, ain't got no license. I don't know how he's gonna drive there. He's probably gonna kill somebody on the way there. So he borrows the car and he gets a ride at Papa John's. And it's about five, six o'clock. And he brings the car back about twelve o'clock. And then she gets off work about two, and then she comes home. Next day. Here comes the pump pump. <laughs> knocking on the door. Okay. They haul off Miss Jeter downtown. Okay. Well, what come to find out that somebody wrapped a log chain around the ATM and tried to pull it out of the QT up here on 28 Bypass. Okay. And her car was the one doing it. Will Miss Jeter ever go to court? Yes or no? Yes. No, she will not. Come on, people. What's in QT? If you've got a QT, what's in QT? Even if the lights are turned off. The camera. What's at Papa John's? And how many people does it take to make pizza at a Papa John's? About 16, right? So what does Miss Jeter have? She has, it starts with a A. Alibi. Alibi. She never will go to court. Now, of course, what they're going to do is they're going to talk to Miss Jeter, and Miss Jeter's going to say, my sorry roommate borrowed my car, and then they're going to start putting two and two together, and then who's going to go to court? Mr. Poor. Mr. Poor. Why? why? Why was O.J. even in court? Because he didn't have an alibi. You don't have an alibi. Your butt's going to court. You don't have a camera. You don't have witnesses. You don't have whatever. Miss Jeter was 100% what? Innocent. She was 100% innocent. If you're 100% innocent, you won't go to court. Okay? And now, with the things we've got now, there's no way. With all the cameras, what does everybody carry around in their pocket? There's no way to get away with anything anymore. Because you think, down the, down the, down the driveway, there's a camera. Somebody's got a camera on their car. Somebody's got a camera on their mirror. Somebody's got, I mean, there's cameras everywhere now. So, if nowadays, now back then, OJ, I will give OJ the benefit of the doubt. He didn't have a camera in his yard. I think he would have cut it off, but I don't think, OJ was not innocent of that crime. He may not have done it, but he was not innocent. I don't think he was. He either had somebody do it, or he helped somebody, or somebody helped him, or the, the, he had his hands in it some way. I don't know how, but he, he he couldn't answer some of those questions when they asked him where he was. And there was nobody to verify. Nobody. So I don't care. You you got nowadays, you got you got all kinds of ways you could tell you're innocent. You got receipts. Okay? I, I, I was at the QT at five o'clock. You got receipts. Innocent. Be careful with the compliment. And that's what we're talking about. Compliment. This is called the compliment. The compliment is what makes up the whole. Think about it. A marriage. A van. Well, forget that. Forget that. We won't talk about that. Uh, let's talk about uh, a dog. Okay? When I was at Southwood, and uh, I know I'm going to date myself, I'm 53 years old. Okay? When I was at Southwood, lunch was 65 cents. 
My father, would, my mother and father would give me a dollar every day. Okay? I got 35 cents. We had ice. We had ice cream South Lake. We were up to, we were up to snuff at the South Lake. And we had ice cream, and ice cream was 25 cents. But to this day, I know my 65, 35, right off the bat because of that. All right? 65 is the complement of 35 because 65 plus 35 makes a what? A dollar. So 0.35 the complements 0.65. 0.65 the complements 0.35. Now there's two ways to make up. One is a decimal. 0.35 and 0.65 is the complement. 0.75, 0.25 is the complement. And vice versa. Whatever you say first, the second one will be the, comp the, the complement. You can also do it with a quantity. If I have a thousand employees. And 250 really suck, okay, as far as being an employee, then what's the complement of 250? 750 are good employees. So you can either do it with a decimal or you can do it with a, what they call a proportion. Meaning that if you're given 1,000 and 250 are this, then that means 750 are not that. So a complement is what makes up the whole. You can do it with true and false. You can do it with guilty and not guilty. You can do it with true, I meant with zero or one. You can do it with black or white. You can do it with man and woman or whatever. Okay? You can do it with whatever. Or you can do it with numbers. That makes up the complement. Let me check the time before somebody starts going into convulsions. What time's class over? 7 5, isn't it? Yeah. 705? Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to touch on the next two things. That's how you do it. Now let's talk about odds. I'm going to put a roulette table up here. Well, I'm not going to draw it. I'm just going to draw a table. And then every, this table has little red and black squares around it. And they're numbered. One through whatever. They also have a green square. And that green square... It's got a zero and a what? Double zero. So let's say, and the others are red and black. Okay? Let me just put. So in roulette, the complement of red is what? Black. Y'all get the point. Every other one is what? Black. There we go. And then every other one is red. And all those have numbers. I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, the, the question is going to say, roulette table has black and red 1 to 36. And then 0 and double 0 are neither, I don't know how to spell neither, I don't know if it's I, I, e, or E, K, I don't know how to do that. Is that right? No, all the way around. I before E never does work. Okay. I before E is that better. Oh, no, yeah, you got it right the first time. Right. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> Y'all really suck. Y'all know that? And boy and banana. I don't know how to spell it now. How about this? Neither. How about that? Okay. <laughs> you ought to see people right at home. Oh, I do that every day. My daughter, she's a perfectionist so like that. Anyway, zero and double zero are neither odd or what? Even. Neither odd or even. Okay? Now, the question is going to ask you three things. The question is going to say, one, find the probability of an even number. And then they're going to say, what are the odds against? And then the third is, what if I bet $1,000 on an even number? Okay? So the first thing you do is how many are even 1 through 36? Well, it's easy. Divide 36 by 2. What do you get? 18. So the probability of even is 18 over 38. And that is what we call success. Why is it success? Because that, if you get an even number, you're going to win. That's success. Hmm? 36. Yeah, 36. Yeah, 36. Zero and double zero. That's oh, two more. Okay. See, I done got half the class. Y'all have got it wrong. Okay. 
Count them. <laughs> One through 36. And then 37, 38. That's, that's the trick. That's what they try to get you to do. All right. So success means that you win. So what's the opposite of success? I love that word. What is it? Failure. Failure. <laughs> yeah. So what would be failure? Well, not. I could put X or this is what they do. Hold the pinky up. They put a bar over it. That means not even. I just put X through it. Okay? But I'm, I don't hold my pinky up. So, so what is the complement of 18 to 38? 20. 20 over 38. Good. Okay, so that is... Now, why didn't I write down both of them? You need both of those fractions in your odds against. Because odds against is the probability of failure over the probability of success. Odds against is the probability of failure over the probability of success. Leave it in fraction form because they're going to cancel out. Okay? So I want you to put the fraction for probability of failure on top and then the probability of success on the bottom. And you don't divide by a fraction, you multiply by the what? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. Something's going to cancel, and you're going to lift, you're going to be left with a ratio. Oral ratio. So what is failure? Y'all supposed to interact with me. Okay, this is what I heard. 20 over 38. 20 over 38. 20 over 38. Thank you. Divided by 18 over 38. You don't divide by fraction. You multiply by the reciprocal. reciprocal and this will always happen. The 38s cancel. And you're left with 20 over 18. Reduce it to what? 10 over 9. 10 over 9. And you can write that three ways. 10 to 9 over 10 to 9. Now, <clears throat> let's multiply that 10 over 9 times that 1,000. Because that's the odds hence. Somebody tell me what 10 over 9 is 1.1111, I think. But anyway, go ahead and do it. What is 10 over 9 multiplied by 1,000? Give me that number. It doesn't take that long. Uh, 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 uh. uh, 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 uh. 1,111. 1,111. Repeat. Okay. Boy, you are, you are Mr. Moneybags. You won $111 in Vegas. You suck. Why? Why didn't I win all kinds of money? Because of the number one rule of statistics or probability. I'm going to write this in red. When the probability is high, the chances are low. The odds are what? Low. So you don't win. So put dollars and put an X to When the probability is low, the chances are because there's three entities in the world that are not into the welfare system. Can you name them? The bank. What else? Vegas. And what else? Insurance companies. What are those three priorities, main, and I know it's a dirty word, I know it's awful, but what do they all have in common? They want to what? Make money. money. Okay? Do they care whether you have money or not? No. Okay? So what does, what does Vegas want? Do they want the probabilities to be high or the probabilities to be very low? They want them to be low because that's the more money they take in because it's harder for you to win. Okay? So, I'm going to drive this home with one change 
and you need to write this down because that's very important. I'm going to change one thing and I want you to do the problem because that way you'll have two problems now in your notebook with the roulette table. I'm going to erase, let me use a big eraser. I'm going to erase this, that, that, and this, and that. Everybody with me? And I'm going to change one thing. I'm going to make this zero or double zero. Now do it. While y'all doing that, I'm going to take the roll. I take the roll every once in a while just so I keep the bureaucrats off my what do you call it? Off my backside. So I'm going to pull up the roll here in just a minute. So write that down. And make it a separate problem so that way you can have two problems to go with. Because you will see a roulette table either in your homework or standardized test or you'll see it on the test. They do not have a test or homework without a roulette wheel on Okay, let me go over to the, it'll only take a minute, the only way we can get started. I already got it pulled up, I just got to find it, there it is. All right, Callahan. Not here. Campbell, you are here, I'm sorry. Campbell. Here. Carmen. Huh? Okay. My number one weak area is names. My number two weak area is dates. My strongest is faces. I remember you six years from now when I see you, but I don't remember names worth a flip. Carver? Here. Cooley? Here. Harbin is here. Head? Here. Hudson? Here. Jeter is here. Keller? Here. Norwood? Norwood is not here. I want I do want them to get a letter because they do there are people not here. I don't know why they're not here, but Poor is here. Ramirez. Here. Sanders. Here. Scott. No Scott. Shaw? Hi. Starter. Here. Sullivan. Here. And Wiley. Here. Wiley Coyote. You know, some people don't even know who that is. That's pretty sad. Hold on a minute. I've got to go back. I hate. Oh, oh guess what I had to do Saturday uh, at my conference? Watch posters. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm in a time warp, people. I really do. I think I'm not in the right place. I think, I, I, I don't understand. It's like I'm in the, I don't know. I'm starting to think I'm doing the wrong things. Did you find you a woman? No, I couldn't find any wild women down there. <laughs> that gum wild women, they hard, I tell you, they hard on, they hard on you. Yep, I got to do it over. Sorry. Callahan's here. C Campbell? Here. Carmen, not here. Carver's here. Cooley? Here. Harbin? Here. Harbin is here. Sorry. I, I said it before you came on. I'm sorry. Head? That's okay. Head's here. Hudson? Here. Jeter's here. Keller? Here. Norwood? No Norwood. Poor is here. Ramirez is here. Sanders? Scott? No Scott. Shaw? Here. Stoddard? Here. Sullivan? Here. And Wiley? Here. There we go. Got y'all. See, I have to do that every once in a while so people that keep not coming can get a letter and say, oh, God, he took, he took attendance. 
I really don't care, but I have to because of the bureaucrats. And if you know anything about bureaucrats, they, they watch their computer like crazy. Okay, so I know it's 6.56, so we're going to finish this up. Okay, watch this. So how many are zero and double zero? Two, right? So that 36, so that's going to be 36 over 38 over 2 over 38, which is equal to what? 36 multiplied by 38 over 2, which is 36 to 2, which is what? 18 to 1. So if you make a $1,000 bet, what do you make? And now you know why Vegas has all those lights and have all the hotels. Because what's the probability of winning? Very, very what? Low. Low. But if you do win, you walk away with some people's salary for the year. Okay? 18000 is a chunk of money. Okay? And that's why. Because the odds. Somebody do right quick. What's 2 divided by 38 in the calculator? 0.01 something? Point zero five. You got a five percent chance, which is better than the lottery. Lottery is like zero, like fifteen zeros, decimal points. Okay. All right. Now this is a recording. If you want to look over the other recordings, but we'll take off next time with addition and multiplicative law. That'll be what Thursday. Y'all have a good night. Be careful. I'll try. Thank you. Bye, Miss Harbin. Bye. I'll see y'all Thursday. Uh, if you're lucky. <laughs> Bye.